In my previous video about the iMac G3, I mentioned a time in Apple's history where they nearly went bankrupt. This is a perfect representation of that time. This computer is a Macintosh Performer 6200 from 1995. It fits the aesthetic of the beige boxes of the 1990s, and is severely underpowered for what it was. This was one of the first PowerPC platform based computers that ultimately led to the release of the iMac G3, G4 and G5 shortly before Apple switched to Intel. This was the start of the Apple revolution. The TechMW Discord server is a fantastic place for you guys to interact with each other and talk about stuff in the TechMW community. Feel free to join, a link is in the description below. So what is the purpose of this computer for this video? Well, I always liked the Performer computers, I like the startup sound and I like the place that they fit kind of in between the original Macintosh computers and the PowerPC computers that came later in the early 2000s. At the start of this, this computer was running macOS 8.6, but was downgraded to 7.6 by the end. This computer is powered by a PowerPC 603E processor running at 75 megahertz. It's also upgraded to 48 megabytes of RAM, and the best part, this computer uses flash storage, making it a heck of a lot faster than it would have been when it came out. This computer is also very easy to upgrade. Take the panel off the back, unscrew the two screws at the back, and you can simply pull the motherboard out. This exposes all of the internal hardware, excluding the hard drive and the CD drive. For this video, I used an Apple M0116 keyboard and an Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2, which were both released around the same time. The aim of this video was to get two old versions of macOS dual booted on this computer. The purpose being, macOS 9, which is the latest version, doesn't have correct compatibility for the Macintosh file system on the original version. This means that if I copy a file to an 800kb floppy disk using macOS 9, for some reason it isn't readable on the original Macintosh. Compare that to macOS 7.6 and it works absolutely fine. So what I wanted to do was install 7.6 on one partition so that I can copy the files to the Macintosh and then have macOS 9 on the second partition so I can use newer applications. This did not go to plan, but I'll get onto that later. To start this, I inserted the macOS 7.6 install CD and used it to partition the flash storage into two partitions, which were two gigabytes each. I then went through the install process. This installation was completely successful and I was able to get to the desktop with no issues. I then went to install macOS 9 using the CD that I've burned. I was able to go through the install process just fine and the install did begin. Unfortunately, it ran into an installation issue where it appeared to be missing files. Now, these CDs were fairly new and I tested them successfully on a PowerBook 1400 CS a couple of weeks before, so I was very confused. To try something else, I tried the same thing using the macOS 8.6 CD and it gave the same result. Um, slight issue. Now the 8.6 disk is doing it. And I can't get any of the macOS versions to work. Hmm. I think what I'm going to have to do is install 7.6 again and then upgrade. I think that's going to be, have to be the way I do it because this, this is not working at all. So the way I thought I could get around this was to install macOS 7.6 again on the other partition where I had intended to install macOS 9. In theory this should work because the core system files are already there but they're just being upgraded so it reduces the risk of any missing files. I went through the setup process and 7.6 installed again perfectly which leads me to believe there's a problem with the CDs rather than the drive. I should also take a moment to mention that this computer came from another YouTuber called Rich's Random Tech Reviews. I found it on an eBay listing and it was completely unintentional, I didn't know this guy was a YouTuber at all, but he does up old vintage Macs and sells them on eBay and has his own collection on Instagram and YouTube and things like that. And it was really interesting to speak to him and kind of learn, and he gave me a free 
DB15 to VGA adapter as well. So that was very, very nice of him. So shout out to Richard over at Rich's Random Tech Reviews. I'll leave a link in the description below. So at this point, once the 7.6 insulation had finished, I took the 8.6 CD and put it in again. Okay, this is now just very, very confusing. I am not sure what is going on, but it just will not install at all anymore. And this is this is on top of the existing installation, which is really confusing me. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe out everything, literally everything, apart from the most basic, basic bit of installation. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we've failed. For some reason, it just will not install on the other partition. I don't know why. I'm just going to roll the whole thing back, um, have one macOS 7 partition, and then we'll just mess around with it and just see what we can do. So, rather disappointingly, I wasn't able to get this to work at all. I have no idea why the CDs didn't work. It's possibly just an issue with the CD drive, but oddly I've been able to install macOS 8.6 on this system before with absolutely no issues. So this is very disappointing. What I might do is reburn the CDs and try this again in the future as a different kind of video where I do a bit more. The purpose of this video and the reason I set everything up was literally just to install the two partitions and unfortunately it didn't work so I didn't really know what to do at this point. So instead, I reinstalled 7.6 on a single partition and tried to play some games. This is Wolf 3D. I actually showed off this game in my previous video uh, on a 1991 DOS PC. Now the Mac version is much more complicated to run, and it was extremely laggy at the max resolution of 640x480. This graphics card is not high end at all, especially not for the time, and it struggled to even load this game. So I had to put it at its lowest resolution of 320 by 200 and that seemed to work absolutely fine. Then I installed Clarisworks, which is an office suite that I happen to have a CD for and I made this lovely little painting kind of abstract thing. I, I don't know why I made this to be completely honest. It worked fine. It, it looked absolutely beautiful. Uh, that'll be my new profile picture, I think. So. I'm very sorry that I wasn't able to get this working for you guys, this would have been very very cool. I will still be making a video on the Macintosh SE in the future, and that will be coming very very soon, and I'll be using this system to bridge that gap, so I hope you're all looking forward to that. What I will say is, if you can get your hands on one of these computers, they are very fun to use, and I'll be making another video on it very soon.